In this really quick video, I'm going to show you how to make a pinwheel pincushion. Um, these are so quick and so simple to make. I'm sure you're going to be making lots of them. I've made mine in Christmas fabrics, so I'm thinking maybe not just as a pincushion, but these would make lovely little decorations as well. If you maybe put a ribbon into one corner, you could hang them up, and you can make them in any size that you like as well. Um, a couple of buttons in the center, and they're just made from really simple squares of fabric. So I'll put all of the, um, the details in the description box below of the materials that you need. Let me show you how easy this is to make. So first thing we're going to do is to take our squares. So I'm making one identical to this one. You can use any colour you want for these and maybe mix and match them but it's quite nice to have the actual pinwheel as a real contrast colour to the background fabric. So we'll need four squares. These are three inch squares or seven and a half centimeters in, squ in, in squareness. <laughs> that, that's for the front. And then to make the actual pinwheel, these are slightly smaller. So I've got four squares that measure two and three quarter inches or that's seven centimeters in size. So that's the front. And then on the back, I've got one, two, three, four, three inch squares. So let's start with the front. We'll put those to one side for now. So we're going to take each one of these smaller squares and fold them in half, wrong sides together to make a triangle. Just finger crease that. And then take one of the points at the bottom over to the point at the top. So we have this. So I've got two folded edges two raw edges. I'm going to put the raw edge right up to the corner of one of my squares. And I'm going to hold that in place with a couple of pins and just keep the pins away from the edge because I'm going to sew this with the pins in and I don't want to sew over them. And we're going to do exactly the same with all four pieces. So in half to form a triangle, take one point up to the top and pop a couple of pins in. Oh, no, raw edges together with the square. And now I've got a non-directional fabric which is really useful because it doesn't matter which way around I'm putting these pieces together. So do be aware of that if you have got a directional fabric. Have a play around with them first. They're not sewn at this point so if you need to turn around any of the pieces then of course you can do up to the center, pop that onto the corner, couple of pins. I have got rather large pins here, I have to say, but works for me. And that side. And then this is the final piece. So corners together, that up to there, up to the raw edge and pin. So I've got four pieces that look identical. Then we're going to turn them around so that you create that pinwheel shape. Then I'm going to take the top two here and just sew them right sides together along the, the centre side there. So let's fold that over. Just line up the edges. I'm not going to repin this. And sew straight down the side. Now the beauty of this is that we're going to have a pin in, um, a pin? We're going to have a button in the centre. So it doesn't matter if all of your points don't match up perfectly. So this is a great, it, it is a patchwork project. It's a great project for a beginner sewer because you don't have to worry about perfect points, which is ideal. So I'm going to just give that a press. Let's take the iron. I'm going to press this to one side so I'm not fussed about seams open. And there we go, so I've got this.
So let's take the second two pieces and we'll do the same. So just make sure that I've got the right sides together and sew down the seam here. So, oh, I've just run out of bo bottom bobbin thread, so just bear with me a second while I pop another one in. Didn't see that one coming. And I'll just re sew over that. It's only got halfway down the seam. At least it was only a little project when I ran out of thread and not a pair of curtains or something. There, so let's open this up, take out the pins, and we'll press. Now this seam is facing in that direction, so this seam I'm going to press in this direction. And that'll help the centre points match up a little bit easier. Like so. So these two pieces now go right sides together and where I made those folds they nestle really nicely together in the centre. Now it will be quite bulky in the centre but that's fine and again I'm not too worried about pressing seams one way or another it's a, it's a pincushion at the end of the day we're not going to win prizes for it. So let's line those up. And so straight across. And again, let's give it a press. Now, if you want to press the seam open, it will make it a little less bulky in the centre, but don't worry too much about that. Let's see how we go. And you could trim that centre bit back a little bit if you really wanted to, but you're not going to see it anyway, because as I said previously, it's going to be underneath a button. So that's the front of my pincushion finished. So now let's do the back. So these again, four squares sewn together in just the same way. So, oops, what am I doing? That way. So I'm going to sew those two together and then these two together. Now I'm using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exactly a quarter of an inch seam allowance, um, as long as it's consistent. So if you wanted to use the edge of your presser foot as a guide for the seam allowance, that's fine, but make sure you do that on all four of the seams. So all of the seams. Right. So I'm going to press this to one side. and this one to the opposite side, although I'm going to leave a turning gap in the center, so that's not really too important. So I have this. So these two now go right sides together. And I'm going to leave a turning gap just in one side here, just so I'm not hand sewing over the seam in the center. I'll do it on this side. I say I'm going to leave a turning gap and invariably I forget. There's the gap. Now this time I'm going to press the seam open. So the seam pressed open and that's going to make it easier for me to hand sew the opening closed. There we go. So 
So let's take the front and the back pieces. And we're going to sew these right sides together, lining up the seams. So on those areas, I will pop a pin in there. And then I'm going to sew all the way around. Oop, a little bit further. There we go. So stop with the needle down in the corner, turn around and go around all four sides. snip across the corners and that'll just cut down on the bulk just a little bit just to encourage the points to be pointy and then we'll turn this the right side out through the gap that I left here that's a very small gap and there is quite a lot of fabric to go through but that's fine so just keep working this until it all comes through Maybe should have left the hole a little bit bigger. The thing is, the smaller the hole, the less hand sewing you've got to do to close it. So this, this is worth it, it'll come through. There we go, so just take a, a turning tool and push out the corners. There we go. I'm just going to iron that one more time because this is very creased up from when it came through the turning gap. Switch my iron off. And then I'm just going to put toy filler into the hole. So use small amounts at a time, and that way you can make sure you push them right into the corner. So right inside here. And I'm not going to fill the center part too much because I want to take the button straight the way through the center. So uh, that causes like a dimple in the center here. So if I've got too much padding here, it's going to be difficult to sew the button on. But I do want it to be nice and plump, so I'm going to push quite a lot of toy filler into the corners to make it nice and firm there. And again, smaller amounts of toy filler tend not to clump as much as if you just put one big piece in. So take your time with this, it's worth it. Then I'm just going to sew the opening closed with a ladder stitch. So if you haven't seen this before, it's very simple. I'm going to take my needle into the fabric so that the knot's inside and then take the needle from one side to the other across the opening. So the stitches actually look like a ladder, it goes from one side to the other. So 
and hook that. So try and keep your stitches small and even and after every three or four stitches or so we're just going to pull this and it closes the opening and the stitches should be practically invisible. Now this is a nice little stitch if you are of closing hole, holes like this or it could be in the back of a toy but it's also a very good mending stitch so if you have um, a tear in a seam maybe it's somewhere where you just can't get it underneath the sewing machine like the inside of a pocket or on the um, the lining of a sleeve of a jacket maybe um, then this is a great stitch to use because you can't really tell if your stitches are small you can't really tell the difference between a sewing machine row of stitches and your ladder stitch. I'm just doubling up the thread now because I'm going to put the button into the centre and then we are just about done. So to do this I'm going to start from the back and put the needle straight into the centre and bring it out into the centre of the front of the pinwheel. Pop my button on there and then go straight back to the back push that through and my second button goes on here back through the second hole back through the center into the first button and try and maneuver the needle so it comes back through the hole now this time I'm going to pull this so I get a nice little dimple in the center of the pin cushion I'm holding both the buttons in place while I put the needle back through and out the other side so do that as many times as you need to. To knot this off, let me turn this around so you can see the colour of the thread. I'm pulling the thread tight, but I'm going to push it through the needle, but not through the fabric, and pull it out this side. Then I'm going to wrap the thread around the button a few times, and then leave a loop, wrap it around the button again, and then they take the needle through that loop and that will bring the knot to the back of the button. So again, round the button, leave a loop, round the button again, needle through that loop and pull the knot to the back of the, the button. Then we can snip that off. And we're finished. So you can see you've got a very quick project that's really fun to do that looks really effective and I think particularly in your Christmas fabric they would make really nice Christmas decorations and of course you can make these in any size that you like you could use them as blocks um, in a quilt it doesn't have to be into a pin cushion you could make the pinwheel in the center smaller or I've actually seen them where they've been varied in size so one block with a large pinwheel the next one's got a small pinwheel so therefore instead of cutting out the two and three quarter inch squares for the center or seven centimeters just make those a little bit smaller and then you can make the different sizes as well which is really effective so I hope you enjoy this quick tutorial and I hope you get making lots of these and enjoy every minute of them I'll see you again soon bye bye